Yeah, why not? All right. Welcome to the episode. Jesse and Mike here trying to scramble to get something together this week about our beloved Wildcats. Yeah. Uh, how are you? <laughs> busy, busy holiday season. Um, but uh, how is how is the state of the Wildcats? You know, mm. um, I, I am better than people feel like, probably. Right. I was just saying before we started that uh, what I notice is an overall sense of dismissiveness about mm -hmm. the last two games. And while part of me wants to get on board with that because it's more painful to to dig into to meaning that could be there, I'm also yeah. I also have learned to trust my intuition over the years. And there there are some significant pieces that I wanted to just kind of bounce off you as a, as a yeah. sounding board, if nothing else. And then we don't have to dwell on it too much. I know everybody's, you know, tonight's the beginning of the PAC 12 schedule. And uh, for us, I mean, it started last night. Um, yeah. So do you want to start with just main takeaways? I've got one clip I want to show it from the FAU game. I think Alabama, there was, there was some stuff there that probably is worthy of dismissal. And then there's maybe some stuff that we might want to comment on um what are you what are your what were your impressions from the two games they're both kind of odd in in different ways right yeah i mean those are you know those are those are two really tough teams they, they really are like let's let's not take anything away from those those two teams and they played um you know with some new unique styles and challenges that and we we talked about that heading into those games that these are going to be kind of revealing because you're not going to see a team as you know, uh, kind of offensively talented as kind of either of them most, you know, most of the rest of the season. Um, FAU plays pretty small, but then has a really talented big. Uh, Alabama chose to play us with just insane, hectic um, fervor. And um, that was what I expected after them coming in with three losses. And um, so... Um, or two losses. They're coming off four. two losses, I think. Four. They, they were, they, yeah, so they were coming off three. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. their four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I think that was um, their fifth. I think, I think oh, that was their, their yeah. Gotcha. Um, well, yeah. So um, I don't know. I'm probably in the, the, uh, a bit dismissive because I don't have good feelings, but that's probably um, indicative of like me. Hey, those good feelings. Those those negative feelings may be worth actually interesting. <laughs> what what was what was the most um like notable thing out of either of those games that you come away with? Because there's a lot we can just let go. We don't have to dissect it too far. But what, um, jump, what jumped out at you if you're really trusting yourself? Yeah, on the positive side, and so let's just start positive. On the positive side, I thought there was a ton of fight out of out of Arizona, and um, uh, you know, we didn't have to. You know, hey, we lost to FAU, right? Bummer. Um, we didn't have to force double overtime, right? Like, you know, we put ourselves into a position because of, of you know, the competitiveness in the fight that, um, that we could. And so that's, you know, that's, that's good. Um, the, you know, the, the big takeaway for me right now, and, and I hate to be negative, um, and I hate to be negative towards a specific player, but Kylan's play over the last, you know, five and a half games has been subpar you know it's been it's been bad for him bad for him and that's been bad for the team um and he's such a obviously a critical part of the you know of what we're doing this year that for him to play below his standard and really to play below the standard of like a starting Arizona point guard if we're going to be frank um that is going to create problems for everybody for the you know for the rest of the guys to do what they need to be doing and, and for our, our team to to succeed in the way that we want it to succeed so I really hate to spotlight a certain guy and he's 18 years old and he's a heck of, he's a heck of a guy and, and we love him, but um, he, hopefully he writes the ship tonight um, because it's, it has been five, you know, almost six games that he's looked pretty bad. Yeah, and and when you say he's looked bad, what about his play are you particularly yeah. noting? Cause he had, I mean, I think he had nine assists and two turnovers against Wisconsin. He That's my ten, half. He had 10, I think he had 10 steals last week in those two games. Yeah, he did have a lot of steals. Um, he he did that that nine assists. That that was the back half of that um, of that. So when I talk about five and a half games, like that back half of that Wisconsin game was good. Um, mm -hmm. The front half was he he played pretty poorly, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, Defensive coverages have been suspect. 
And his, and so and then yeah he's gotten some steals but honestly his 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 lack of of communication on switches has been really strange mm -hmm. um, and then his lack of chasing um, through ball screens you know when it hit, when when we're not switching um, sort of like give it up all, yeah yeah it's been, it's been alarming you know mm -hmm. you know it's one thing to get to get to 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 get a step behind a guy in a ball screen that's that that's the idea of it you know that happens. But, um, you know, you got to stick with that play because good things can happen. And so, um, you know, like he, he's a fantastic basketball player. He, he's, he's not trash. Yeah, it's not like he's been completely terrible. It's just I we've seen him, you know, do more. And, um, you know, his shooting has been suspect. Um, he, you know, his playmaking hasn't been, you know, where we needed it to be. Um, so that's, you know, that's that's the Kylan that we're all hoping, you know, can can be that next level guy. and and. I just haven't seen that much of them, you know, you know, three assists, I think against FAU and maybe three against uh, Alabama, three or four, maybe against Alabama, um, three against Al Alabama. It's just um, not enough points, not, not efficiently enough, not enough defense. Just give me some more Kylan. If we're, if we're diving into this a little bit, yeah, I'm going to show a clip in a second from FAU. Mm -hmm. He's got a 9% free throw rate, which seems wow. Which seems, Jeez. and and I think like if you watch qualitatively, if you watch him, he doesn't look like he's comfortable initiating contact in the lane, mm -hmm. and I think I don't think that's that's a that's a limitation. I wouldn't say it's a problem, but I think what you're talking about is we have like players have to at least work to gain their self awareness enough to to how they can fit into the system. And I think one of my takeaways from these two games, because it's it's late, it's tricky, it's nuanced. So I'll give my disclaimer after I give my critique. Okay. So yeah. So I think my my main question here moving forward is how much can Boswell and Love specifically learn? Like how much can their IQ floor raise? It's odd that I think what what's the frustrating thing about this team or or you know concerning thing about this team is they seem to have all the raw ingredients uh mm -hmm. for like at least a championship ceiling which I would say probably you know most of us would have said last year even at our peak in the season which might have been like beating Tennessee or, or may, actually the peak for me was sweeping the LA schools at home and the and the defensive toughness that we showed against UCLA particularly that was like okay that's our that's where I had the most hope for that season. But even then I, I would have been realistic and say, I don't think we have championship raw ingredients. Right. This team does. And yeah, what it seems like is, is unfolding to me is a real puzzling sort of fluidness of our IQ. Um, mm. it, it might be sort of the collective low IQ team that he's had. And it's odd to say that because it's also seems to be the team that's the most invested and consistently hard playing yeah so it's like i hesitate to criticize because i look at a guy like caleb love and i'm like i have no doubt that this dude is going to bring 100 percent every game and he cares about the team i i no longer have this kind of internet belief right. that like he's selfish i don't think he's i don't think he's selfish at all i think he just no. he, he has a mode that orients towards his doing everything when things get hard which we can come back totally. to but yeah. But I think like with Boswell, it's like how far can he come in the next three months in terms of his own self-awareness and doing some reflection on 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 his role and what he can do, because he certainly gets opportunities, you know, and yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I thought I thought he actually played pretty well against Alabama. I, I'd have to watch it again. Um, I know that first half was a little bit uh, out of order. But he thought he I thought he played pretty well in the second half in general. And yeah. he hit that he hit that big three to really sort of like dagger three towards the end of the game that put us up 13, I think. And what I like about his play is that even against FAU, where where I will criticize some of his decision making, he wasn't afraid to come come in and still take the shot, even though he was clearly in his head about shooting. Yeah. I mean, could have could have used some more mental clarity on that last possession, of course. Um, well, here's what I want to show. Can we go to the film? 
So to, to me, the, the Florida Atlantic game, um, boy, there's a lot there. I think there's a, there's a lot there that we could just, like I said, just let go. There's a lot there that I think every season, there's a moment in the, in the first third of the season that foreshadows a team's mm. like, it's almost like if you're on mm. a, a hero's journey, here's yeah, the, yeah. here's the kryptonite for this team's yeah. journey. And, you know, of course, let's be fair in the NCAA tournament, 67 teams end up losing. That doesn't mean right. they failed or they didn't grow or they didn't learn. Um, yeah. But what inevitably seems to happen is where wherever your holes are, like they will find a way to resurface before the season's over. Sure. And, and I, and I like Tommy's concept of um, creating margin for error. Mm -hmm. It's a really good concept. And I think the, yeah. the thing that was so frustrating for me about FAU was that we had a hundred chances to win that game and they had like three <laughs> and, and, and we talk about culture and being really solid and trusting your system. When, when things got hard, we dissolved into one-on-one -on -one yeah. and they stuck to their guns. And, you know, of course on, on their side of it, they, they made really tough shots and all that's been well-documented and good for them. Um, but the part of it that was our responsibility, it was like, is there anything more painful in life besides real loss, you know, um, right. then, then squandered opportunity. Right. You know? And, and yeah. it was, you know, so, so just the, the stuff that sticks with you and, and, and yeah. negatively in the long term, you go, so, so when, I, I could have had it. So like, thir <laughs> so 13, we had 13 more field goal attempts than FAU. And no a, way. Yep. And a lot of times you look at that and you're like, oh, well, they were probably getting to the line. We also had six more free throw attempts. We had we had 18 more rebounds, which of course, oh my god, that's not an additive statistic that goes in hand with the extra field goal attempts. Yeah. And I think we had uh, 16 offensive boards. I think they only had six, but it felt like every single one of theirs was converted. Yeah. yeah. And so you know, I think the pain of squandering that that to me is emerging as a theme with this team, where it's like you you are good enough to get all the chances in the world. Um, but boy, there's some head scratching decisions that are made. And, and this is what happens when you squander and a team plays really well down the stretch, they can nip you. Yeah. And all we needed, we didn't need to be perfect. This wasn't like Purdue for me, where it was like, you know, right. we would have had to play near perfect and we could have been yeah. right there, which yeah, yeah. we, we, which we were capable of, but it would have been like, damn, we played amazing and we won by a basket. You know, this right. was like, man, all you had to do was convert a couple basic convert a layup. Plays. With, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the, what Caleb love Caleb love trying to dunk that ball when it, that dunk when it was is a layup, really man. that was that was a high diff, degree of difficulty dunk when it yeah. could have been a layup. That was like really emblematic to me of yeah. Omar yeah. missing Omar oh. missing seven bunnies or whatever. And yeah. Like, the dude, you you finish at like seventy percent at the rim, and you, for some reason this game you're at like thirty five. Like what? What's going on? So anybody um, anybody who's listening can relate to the pain of squandered opportunities. And I and I think what I hope is that this team actually takes that in. Sure, you're going to miss shots someday. I'm not talking about that. You know, it, a lot of it was just missed shots. Um, yeah. So you know, but a lot of it was just. You you got a chance here, and the and and these guys really like FAU shouldn't have been in that game at the end. And I will um, I'll show one piece here, and then we can move on. Uh, did I get rid of it? Where did it go? It's my hoop math, but we're gonna switch over here to this part. So this is gonna be um, the last possession of of last two possessions of regulation where we actually really had the game. Uh, more or less one and i want to show this defensive possession because it was excellent and actually in response mm -hmm. to your thing about boswell um watch how boswell pursues and gets this steal and so first of all just watch how we can dial in we had a lot of really good possessions watch boswell pursue there he is yeah yeah okay. watch so, this watch this possession so this is the game right here right here's the game you get this stop, you win the game, basically. And Boswell pursues right. and gets the steal. That's it. The game should be over right there because you have yeah, a two-point two lead. <laughs> you're up 42 seconds. So now I'm looking at this like, wait, how did I, I don't remember how we lost this game? <laughs> you're gonna find out. And so, and then and then so you so you have a textbook 
team defensive possession there. You defend like that, eighty yeah. percent of this rest of the season, you're not going to lose with this type of lineup. So then, what you see happen is instead of falling back on our system, which is get guys moving, dribble handoff. I get it. You don't want to turn the ball over. So instead, you have your point guard pounding the ball. You don't make them defend at all. And here's an IQ moment. What's Let's ask Mike Defoe. Basketball one-on-one. One-on-one. 26 seconds left. You got the ball. They're going to get the ball with 13 seconds left. What is the main thing you have to be concerned about if you're Arizona on this possession transition? Um. I just don't, I don't want them getting an easy run out to the basket, right. honestly. Right, right. Floor balance, right? <laughs> yeah. So what, what do you learn in seventh grade when you're a guard and the point guard goes to the hoop? <laughs> rotate, yeah, you rotate gotta, back, right? You got to get back. Yeah, so the one, back the one thing that can't happen on this possession is an imbalanced floor where they get a shot, yeah. right? So, yeah. so this is the time, if any, where I want Boswell pulling up from three. <laughs> <laughs> but what happens here is he gets all the way great we love him attacking but he avoids contact he takes a shot that he basically never Ball, makes and here's our, right there and here's our guards right here's caleb and here's pella looking at the ball i, I don't know yeah. what pella's doing over there well caleb's actually looking like he's going to go for an offensive board so remember this isn't a tie game we're up by two yeah yeah so look at where caleb is right here <laughs> Oh, so Pell is sort of rotating, but he's pretty casual. It's just casually. And man's right. going to get his, his robe on. Ball comes out. And yeah, and loves behind the play. So there's a shot. Everybody looks up. The, the now we've got a scattered floor, right? So then of course this. Yeah. Right. So there's the offensive the rebound. rebound. Boom. Umar is not even across half court. That that was played out almost like we were in a um like we were down one. Yeah. And so you know, again, I can live with the loss to Florida Atlantic. All here's my Sean Miller. All credit to Florida Atlantic. They played a wonderful game. Um, <laughs> but like, that, we're gonna get more impressions in later yeah, yeah, episodes. I, we're gonna have to. <laughs> <laughs> all credit to. Um, he, but like that to me, the concern in that is where is the IQ? Where's the basic sort of communication? Like that should have been, at the very least, if they come down and they shoot a three over you and you're in position fine you shake their hand and tip tip your cap um but that whole game and a lot of alabama was and a, and a lot of purdue was really sort of disjointed and disorganized yeah. and so yeah what i'm what i'm excited about now as we head into pac-12 play is let's see you know they talk a really big game about being able to learn and grow and we've got so much to you know tommy keeps saying this team's got a lot to a lot to grow on um so now let's see there there's a lot of tape which is the but the best part about this this non-conference run isn't that we made it through with really high marks and that we're we, we're still penciled in as a one seed right now in my opinion the best thing is that like you said there's there is so much tape of us looking like like we just started playing basketball together um and and that's shocking after like you know what it felt like a first five or six games where you're like first five games you're like oh yeah this team like has the nuts they got it all figured out and then there's five games of like, what what is going on with you guys? You know, mm -hmm. or you know, or, or, or three games of just like, and, and look, I know it's December finals. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. you, you've, you've non-con is long, and and you're is traveling, and a and lot of are, travel. Yeah, and there's a, a gauntlet, and, mm -hmm. and FAU, you know, they get a week off to prepare for they us. Great. We get a couple, yeah, we get a few days. It's tough. I'm, I don't. I'm not, I don't mind losing. I'm not saying we're mentally weak no. or whatever. No, it's how we lost. Yeah. Yeah, but so the, and I think they hopefully they can build on it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I do think that this is a really high IQ group. <laughs> you know, like I, I, they, they are like individually when I when I hear them speak and when mm -hmm. you know I, I see I've seen interviews or you know I've seen these guys break down film and I'm like, yeah, man, like you've got a great basketball mind. Mm -hmm. This is fantastic. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys in this team that know how to move the ball and move off the ball, and um, and I'm like, yeah, this is you know this this group is is really sharp. Um, yeah, they, they looked pretty dull at times and that that's pretty shocking. Hopefully, like you said, they, they can find <clears throat> out of this, out of the, all this tape, some stuff to develop on and, and learn and, and become what we think they can be, yeah. which is, yeah. is a guy that is a run, a, a team that can make a run. Right. Totally. And I think, and I think those pieces are there. So as we, as we come away from the non 
conference, are there any other kind of major takeaways for you? When we started, we were focused a lot on bench development mm. and, you know, rim percentages and yeah, they've done, they've done um, a lot of things really well. I mean, the rebounding has been as good as probably any team in recent history. I don't think we saw, I don't think we, I don't think we forecasted that one. Right. I don't think mm -hmm. any of us were like, Oh man, this is a team that is going to be superb in rebounding. And they have been, which is amazing. Um, obviously KJ Lewis and Jaden Bradley have given us more, I think than, than we anticipated or at least expected out of, after, you know, the first game or whatever, we're, you know, I think they've stepped up. However, um, you know, Krivas has he, you know, is, is he making a, a jump? Is he ready? You know, he looked like he was ready for, for 25 minutes a game and then he plays seven minutes a game, mm. you know, against step AU. Or seven the, minutes sta the, staff, the staff, the staff seems to trust him less than the fan base, which is odd. That, yeah, totally. And yeah, he all like, he looked like he was deserving of all of that trust and all of us, I think got really excited. And, and then all of a sudden it's like, you know, is this Henry VSR 2.0 where mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're just thinking, Oh, they have to, they're the staff needs to protect this guy, you know, mentally. Um, so, you know, has the bench developed? Are we as deep as, as we thought? I don't know. You know, we haven't seen Paulius who I think a lot of us expected to, to really like keep AJ Lewis off the floor. You know, um, we haven't seen really the scoring that we that we kind of need out of, most anyone on the bench, but definitely, you know, Lewis and Bradley I kind of need those guys to score. Um, they you know, both they had, obviously... they both had pretty good. I mean, Bradley forced a couple shots, but like, I kind of liked his aggressiveness. He and KJ were excellent. I thought against yeah. FAU and, yeah. and, and, and Alabama <clears throat> and Alabama. Um, yeah. But, you know, still double, you know, can I, Jaden Bradley for all of his aggressiveness against Alabama at four points, you know? Yeah. He had 10 um, shots against FAU, eight points. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, um, I don't know. You gotta know, it's early productive. in the season. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be more productive. It's early in the season. There's, I, there's stuff that I'm excited about uh, with that, um, that group. I think their defense has been great off the bench. Um, I think they're passing the ball really well. I think they've bought in. Um, I do need to see them be more productive. Um, yeah. Totally. Yeah. And I think the uh, defense has been really, really encouraging because theoretically you know it should be easier to develop the offense I, I was thinking about it last night yeah five of our five of our eight rotation guys are first year players in the system it's crazy two you know key shot um two are third year guys umar and pelham mm -hmm. and one yeah. is a, and one is a second year guy who's you know 18 years old so years old. yeah so <laughs> it's like gone are the days of continuity and, and yeah. building. And I think it's, it, it, do, it takes going through some of these moments for, you know, and so now, so now here's the question is, do these moments cause you to regress into distrust or can you come together? And I think what we saw against Purdue and, and Florida Atlantic was two teams that are well established with their experience mm -hmm. and their and their trust in their system. 100%. 100%. And what you what you saw against Alabama was a team that was probably more talented than any of them that just had but, like very disorganized sense of self, you know. No real system. No so, real, yeah, no real. Right. Yeah. Right. Nothing to really like anchor them yeah. in those moments and I think Arizona has a little of both. And so mm -hmm. the question remains are we going to move toward you know, really being rooted in our process, in our system when things get tough, or are we going to turn into Alabama? And so far I've seen a little of both, you know? Yeah. I wish we had more of a break where we, mm -hmm. where these guys could, you know, really spend some time um, reflecting on all of this and, and, and spend some time growing together. You just have to trust that they, that whatever this week or whatever that we just got is enough. Um, yeah. And that they're going to come in to non-conference or to conference play and and show up. And I know a lot of player and a lot of fans are looking at conference play and going, well, that here are finally a list of cupcakes for us to go uh, trounce. Um, I just, you know, you and I have talked. I just do not think that's the case. Um, you know, tonight's game is a great example, and it's a great mm -hmm. example of the of the difficulty of continuity. Um, you know, this Cal team, a lot of new faces, new coaching staff. They have real talent on that team. Mm -hmm. I, I I respect the guys that are on that team. Um, you think about Oregon, you know, beating SC, Oregon. You know, I didn't think much of them heading to the season because of a lack of continuity and a lack of leadership. Jackson Shellstead is is that guy already. My big fear. 
Um, and, uh, you know, they have some guys that are injured that are, that are going to come back mm -hmm. and, and, some, and some guys that are freshmen that are going to continue to grow like Evans, who put up a monster game against SC and mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they're going to be, they're, they're going to be really tough. And so it's not like we have the luxury of a lot of time or a lot of like, it's like easy Hang cupcake on. games where. Yeah. Hang on one know, second. Is, yeah, go for it. I'm on a call. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I'll be done in a little bit. <laughs> family family um <clears throat> sorry to interrupt you no no i mean that so yeah that's that's um uh, continuity in college basketball is, is so much and um we we re like you said we really don't have it yeah. um and so can we overcome that um i hope so you know the guys that we did bring in are you know love and, and um Keyshad. those are you know those guys are tough they know what they're doing bradley's you know had a great season under his yeah. belt at at, L at alabama so they all um, bring it they all yeah. bring it and they're and they they're not afraid and i think those no. two things are really hard to, to teach so i think that's yeah. a that's an amazing foundation and then the so. talent and then the talent level is sky high right so totally with each, with, with each of the with like one through eight these guys are um so yeah um, i can't we'll i can't have you know i think what what i want to see is caleb love able to look at that stat sheet and realize that 26 points on 25 shots is not good like that's that's not going to get it done um yeah eight for 25 is terrible you know and yeah you know let's not the old woodenism let's not mistake activity for achievement he he yeah. almost he almost made four or five spectacular you know the dunk the missed layup the two leaners at the end of regulation, like you got to make those if you're, if you're not going to give anyone else a chance and people keep saying, well, he's the only one. I don't think that's the narrative. I think, I think he's yeah. just taking the ball and going. I, I want to, I thought Pella against FAU is fantastic down the stretch. He made a couple yeah. big buckets. He's now comfortable going over people in the post. Yeah. Um, and, his, and his foul rate is fantastic. KJ Lewis. Now his foul rate, he was money from the free throw line. He's shooting 83, 84% from the line. Like and his get those guys. To the rim is, yes. is great. Yeah. yeah the, trust the system. Let mm -hmm. those guys slash and get a foul call in late situations. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, huh, we'll see. Cause I thought like we could, if you're FAU, you're just sitting there going like, okay, fine. Play it, play us like this. We'll take the ball and go down and <laughs> take our opportunities, you know, <laughs> just hand us, yeah. hand us the game, you know? Um, so it's, I, I think it's dangerous to dismiss that. And I, and I'm sure the staff is not, um, you can dismiss the, the meaningfulness of the loss. That's, that's totally understandable. It's not a huge deal, but there's a lot there. Um, <clears throat> so with PAC 12 play, I'm, I think we're going to learn a lot from, about these guys or do they have the same mindset that apparently most of the fan base does that this is just not to be taken seriously do they care about the last pac 12 regular season championship do they so you're going to start sure. to learn about so, like i mean i would what yeah. what is what is their true mindset because anybody can start you know the first part of the season is gravy because you're out there and it's new and you run off the energy of novelty exciting. it's yeah. exciting you know that there's the prove yourself narrative of of all these guys in their own way and and now you're in the thick of it you know and it's like yeah. so the thing about the pac-12 that the, the reason why i lean more towards the conservative prediction than apparently the most fans is that it seems like most of the pac-12 teams really get very regionally minded when it comes to mm -hmm. pac-12 season and and you're going to see oregon's going to be so think about it this way arizona fans either oregon or ucla is going to come out of this weekend 2-0. and And if it's UCLA, they're going to have two road wins. And if it's Oregon, they're going to have beaten the LA schools, which as bad as they've looked, will probably end up, you know, 12 to 14 wins. That still counts as, as lifting still you up counts, towards the right. high of, yeah. So it's like, I actually don't care about a number one seed because I feel like Tommy's Tommy's breakthrough team is not going to come from a one seed because I think they kind of have to go through the, the underdog of it. Maybe we'll see. Um, but sort of like predictive. 
I am getting predicted. I, I just have, a, I, you know, honestly, two years ago, I was like, please don't make us a number one seed because it's almost yeah. like this false sense of an accomplishment. The, the rap um, poison of it all. Entitlement. Really, really, yeah. Yeah. If you have a really well-established culture, they, you know, they can handle it. Duke like, and Kansas yeah, yeah. can handle being Kansas a one seed. Kansas can handle being a one seed, yeah. right? Yeah. Cause, the, Cause they always are, but we haven't established any of that. So yeah. I, I don't really care. I think it's fun for fans, but I'd rather see us, um, be slighted a little bit and have to have to fight because I, I don't think this team has learned yet how precious those opportunities really are. And I think that's evidenced by the way they throw possessions around. Um, yeah. And they're certainly it, capable. It, yeah. Is, is there learning on Tommy's behalf um, that he, that he needs to go through? Do you think is, is, is some of that him learning as a coach? I mean, obviously he's been, I would think after time. 20 years, no, I, <laughs> I think I think what we hear from him is front facing stuff that makes sure that he doesn't put his players into any sort of question, which right. is exactly how I would Love do it, it too. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure he is not, you know, it's not that it's not true what he's telling us, but he's also saving the real feedback for the locker room. Yeah. And and he's been through it with Gonzaga where he knows the stakes. Like he he spent time in the WCC where you cannot lose a game or you lose a seed line. And so mm -hmm. he understand he understands that. I think yeah. I think the, the big thing is like you have young players in, in this era who are treated like you know superstars from the time they're 15, some of them. Mm -hmm. Um and they and they they don't necessarily understand that life has a limited amount of opportunity in it. And and nor nor did I when I was 19. <laughs> you know? Um, but maybe, maybe they do. Like maybe they look at that and they're like, gosh, look at how many easy shots we missed we could have this game shouldn't have been 73 71 when i showed that clip it should have been 77 71 and then it's a different process in the last minute, yeah right yeah just with a couple um, simple plays you know <clears throat> yeah and hopefully some of that isn't hey I, I just i just should have finished yeah hopefully some of that is hey i should have relied on my brother next to exactly, me exactly exactly hey i should trust my teammate i should so i mean i i I actually, similar to you, I have a, a high belief uh, in all these guys as individuals. That's why it's hard for me to be too critical. Um, yeah. But I but I also am wary. I've watched the Pac-10, Pac-12 for, you know, 30 years. And it's, <laughs> it's, a t it's a tough conference on the road. And when you add Colorado and Utah being as good as they are this year, like, yeah. that could be a sweep um, for, a, you could yeah. go and you could play well in the mountains and get swept, you know? So yeah. I don't think we will necessarily, but um We'll leave that for the for the other predictions. I I will announce what I decided for my boy. Is it cats ninety seven on the board? Ninety seven cats, yeah. Ninety seven cats. If you're listening, all right. Here's my I, instead of predictions, I'm going to do commitments. So my commitment is that anytime the cats get a road sweep, uh oh oh wait, what am I going to do? Okay, anytime. First of all, I'm not going to shave until we get a sweep of some kind. <laughs> If we get a road sweep, I'm going to take that little pun and I'm going to go over to my local park and I'm going to clean up my local park. I'm going to do my Aww. own. I'm going to do my own road sweep. His own his own road sweep. I love mm -hmm. that. I'm trying to yeah. align it with something that felt, you know, serving and and so there's my commitment. Like to, so Cats 97 can have your predictive day in the sun and I so that way I can root for you to be right. Um and yeah, what I'm gonna I'm gonna stop talking. Let's let's resettle ourselves here. Are we talking about the Pac-12? <laughs> what do you have to say? <laughs> Save me for myself. Yeah. Um yeah, let's just uh it'll be fun to watch the cats tonight. I hope that we we get off to a good start. Um the Pac-12, how do you see it shaving out as far as um the number of teams that have impressed you? I mean, have you been have you been able to watch anybody? I've been able to watch, that, but <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I know Dana Altman and I still believe in Dana Altman to a degree. I think Right. This whole era NIL era has got him a little mixed up with his culture, but um, yep. you better not sleep on Oregon. I think they'll be, I think they'll no, be right they, there. They look tough all of a sudden. Um, yeah, but, Colorado and Utah surprisingly um, difficult, more difficult than I expected. So, um, but definitely Washington, honestly, yeah, isn't it doesn't look as bad as I know they're good, you know, yeah. The winning against Gonzaga isn't as impressive to me because it's a bit of a rivalry thing where crazy things can happen. So and they're I want to caveat that. Yeah. yeah. And so like that was almost like Wisconsin beating Marquette, where I was mm -hmm. like, I'm mm -hmm. not that impressed. You know, like that's that stuff happens, man. So yeah, but they um, but, but they but, but still, they usually don't. <laughs> they usually yeah, don't. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but you know, there, there, yeah, there, there's some teams here. At SC looks s- s- silly, but you know, I think why they they I I just don't. I think Andy Enfield should be like a um, recruiting coordinator, like yeah. for, for Kentucky or something. And yeah. he, he's a terrible, clearly like terrible at creating a basketball product in game <laughs> or, or developing <laughs> players apparently totally, you know. totally. Uh, it's... i say that and they'll sweep us but i i <laughs> even watching them last year at McHale, i was like this is the one team that i've seen all year that feels like they made it easy on us to win the game um yeah 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 i mean i think washington states looked really good i think they've had a couple yeah. really sneaky wins uh, they're a we, tough defensive team they've yeah. uh They've got a good coach, I think, in, in certain ways. I think the, the schedule helps us in a way that we don't have to go to UW this year. Mm-hmm. We do have to go to Pullman. Um, the way that they... So weird. If you so look weird. at the schedule, the way they've done it is they've taken away... So instead of your rivalry game being just the only game of a week, they do, they've, they have one week where we have ASU only. And then mm-hmm. in the second time around, it's actually in the middle of the week with the other team that we only play once oh right so i think is so i think we go saturday game asu wednesday and then saturday against uh it must be uw or someone like that so because i think our our two one-off games are washington and are we playing at home oregon state yeah i don't think i don't think we i don't think we go to corvallis do we oh no maybe we do no uh we do go to corvallis yeah you got the schedule up they don't yeah they don't come to us Right. Okay. So we don't play Oregon State at home. So that, yeah. so I think that week in February is ASU Wednesday, Oregon Saturday, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, a, I've got ASU. Yeah. ASU Wednesday, Oregon Saturday. Right. Yeah. So I think a lot of times when people think about conference standings, you have to also look at the the sequence of how the games fall. And mm-hmm. I had, I had been worried about this Bay Area trip for a while. I actually think that a loss to FAU makes this bay area trip a little more secure for us yeah um, no, not, no more very trappy you know and we're, you got we're no not, excuses not, now there's yeah. no excuses yeah. yeah so i think like those teams will probably play really well and i think cal is more dangerous than some of their definitely than their record because they've they've really mm-hmm. lost a bunch of close games to pretty good teams. super close yeah. super close game yeah and, or or took it to overtime um so they've they've been in some tough games. They're gonna, yeah, I think they're gonna be a tough go. So I'm excited to see them tonight. What do you what do you what do you see shaking down in the in the Pac-12? Um, you know, I'm worried that they're that we didn't do enough as a conference in the non-con mm-hmm. in order to get enough teams in, and then we're just gonna beat up on each other during conference yeah. play as these teams gel and 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 get healthy or, or come together better. Um, which sucks, you know. Mm-hmm. That's that's a bummer because then we look like jokes. But yep. in reality, right. if you if you want to come play in the Pac-12 and, and take these road trips, like they would, you know, most teams would struggle. Yeah. Um, or or at least you know, like it's not there's no there's no walking through it, right? Um. So, but the the tough part is that you know, getting a, a high seed or getting into the tournament at all, it does require playing well. Um. In the non-conference, and yeah, not enough teams probably did that. Um. It's the story every year. Look, yeah. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it looks like UCLA is fully out, which is nuts. Um, wow. They've you know, really struggled. Which, yeah. Yeah. So um, you say that, crazy. but then, but then watch, watch how they play in Eugene tomorrow. I mean, they, they're the thing about them is like, he's going to, I think if there's one thing I respect about Mick Cronin and, and there's a lot, there's a lot to critique about Mick Cronin, of course, it's, mm-hmm. it's that he, he will never let his foot off the gas in terms now. of what, what he, he he will will that team as far as it can go. It will not yeah. underachieve. It will just simply be limited based on his abilities. Um, but they yeah. will, but they will put the pedal to the metal on defense and they might gut out a 58, 57 win when they shouldn't, you know? Yeah. That offense looks terrible, but yeah, you're entirely correct that I, I'll never disrespect uh, Cronin's ability to get team, a, a team that even a new team or team guys that haven't played together like this, that, you know to to play competitively on the defensive end they're they're probably going right. to show up and do that um, he's he's like that. yeah he's like sean miller if mm. if like three women in a row had like cheated on him or something yeah it's just yeah. like, it's like the, the angry yes. version of yeah <laughs> um yeah so it's 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 a sad ending probably now we're mm. now we're forecasting but you know it's, it's, forgive us this this one time it's probably a sad ending to the pac-12 where you know, UCLA probably doesn't make the tournament and we probably, you know, are looking at four teams max, you know, getting in and maybe three. 
Um, you know, Colorado, Arizona, Oregon, Colorado, U- Utah, Utah, Oregon. maybe. Yeah, these are the teams that I think have have a chance. Uh, Washington and USC are probably on the uh, you know kind of, mm-hmm. kind of w- wondering if they're possible, and everybody else is is, is already out basically. Um, That's so sad. It's crazy, but um, but yeah, doesn't doesn't discount the the effort that we need to give every every time we we That's right. place it up. So excited to see that get started tonight. Um, can't believe that it's here already. That conference play is here already. It was um, in a flash, doesn't it? Yeah, and part of that probably uh, I know that you know you know you're you're a basketball devotee, but oh, um, oh right, yes, we got to talk about the football team. Heck of a win last night, and, yeah. and just I I had I'm I'm were you pumped? Honestly, lightly hungover. Um, yeah, bear down. Uh, um, it, it I had people over. We watched the nice. game. We were freaking out. It was it was a blast. I obviously, haven't had that much fun watching Arizona football in a long time. So shout was- yeah, shout out football team. I don't necessarily follow football, but I I was thinking about you because I I was out with a couple friends at a food truck place where they have beer and TV and stuff. Nice. And so I watched like the first two minutes and it was like oh we're up ten nothing on like four plays. Oh that's cool. Yeah. And, and then of course then I checked it like an hour and a half later and we were down. I was like, oh, all right. Well, the SEC, Big 12, always better. Yeah, it was Even tough without their starters, they can beat us. But then we came back and put it to them. Yeah, um, showed a lot of fight, which I love. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, the mm-hmm. program the program deserves it for, with mm-hmm. the guys and, and, and the way that they bought in from you know, what Fish is asking from them. Mm-hmm. Um, super, super, super cool to see just culturally, mm-hmm. like, you know, yeah. as we're loving about uh, what Tommy's been able to, to start building. You know, Fish is clearly that kind of a guy who's building a culture. Um, and that, that win was, was pure culture. That was awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. Way yeah. to go. Um, yeah. so on that note, what would you, you know, without getting into records and all that, because you could go 18 and two and still kind of look shaky in certain ways. Mm-hmm. What of all the things that we've mused over the last several weeks, what would be the most hopeful point of progress that you could see from this team in the, in the PAC 12 season? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. I won't. I don't need to go into into the record. I guess. Um, well, I mean, I mean, you home, can if you defend, want. Yeah. yeah, defend home court. You know, yeah. I don't. I don't ever want to see it. And I, I think that take that's that's something about mental toughness that you yeah. just, you know, um, part of it's being good enough. But you know, most te- Arizona teams are so. But mental toughness, just, um, you know, you don't you don't give up games at home. Um, so defend home court. Um, get some road sweeps. Um, as far as the team, yeah, I'm going to revert back to the bench and just think about if I if, so, if 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 we can get some double digit points out of you know games out of some of those guys, not with you know every night, but just if we can see them pop up, I think that makes us obviously a much more dangerous team where you know somebody can have an off night performance wise. Um, would love to see Caleb not feel like he needs to take that many shots and and, and be able to spread that offensive load around because, like you said, those guys are capable. Um, so yeah, a, just a little bit more balanced just and, and, and part of that being push some of those, um, shot attempts to the bench and, and let those guys get some buckets. Um, and then I really badly want to see Pella Larson take more threes. He's got one made three of the last three games. He just doesn't it's, get them. Yeah. I, I, it, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make um, any sense. Uh, and so C- Caleb driving, kicking to, to Pella, I mean, just should be like bread and butter stuff yes. for us. Yes. Um, as the same, same thing with Kylan, like you know, yes, Jaden and, and Caleb should be driving with the ball and Kylan and, and Pella should be on the wings and, and that should be a, an easy kick. Um, if it's, a, if that's available, you know what I mean? Um, so, and I think if they run their stuff more, yeah, I think, yeah, I think, yeah. It, I think it, it it's more available. Re- totally. And that, I think I that's, know. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no. And, 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 and then that's a great, and that'll be my final point on it. Do run this stuff more. Um, mm-hmm. I know that we are an up-tempo offense and that we like that we get a lot of points really quickly. A lot of that's transition. Um, it doesn't, ha- it, it, if we're not in transition, you know, if, if, if we're in a half court situation, I don't need us to just work our way into the first three pointer that, that, that we feel like, um, you know, or just immediately drive and, so- and hope something happens out of that drive. Um, work the ball around, run the ball, run, run a continuity ball screen offense, confuse some guys, overload a side, see what you can, you know, see what you can get out of, out of the defense and make them make a mistake so that we can take advantage of it rather than just relying on our offensive skill is just going to be better than their stand, you know, than, than yeah. a set defense. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. You, what do you, what are you, I what mean, are you looking I th- forward to? I think you named a lot of it. I think, um, well, I talk co- a lot. So yeah. Well, that's good because <laughs> it helps me not talk so much. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're, we're suited for this. Um, yeah. Or not. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I want, I, I don't know how to quantify it. I think if, if you yeah. watch and if as a fan, any fan who watches enough, you have a good sense of when they're really leaning into the system and trusting the offense. And I'd like to see a little more trust in, Hey, let's cycle this through a couple of times because yeah. part of, part of what my, my, my computer like mind <laughs> understands about Tommy's offense is, is it's like it wears you down with the number of yeah. cy cycles you can put a team through. Mm -hmm. And so instead of, instead of the quick step back three, I'd like to see a couple cycles and get Pella on a back door, get, yep. get, get somebody just a step out of place and maybe, maybe Keyshot gets fouled, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I think, but what that distills into for me is the trust. Can these guys yeah. just trust the system enough? The other part is um, trusting each other. Trust each other. As you yeah. named, like really trust that the system will produce those moments and you will actually rise up like Purdue and FAU did. Um, will you rise up in those moments because of the system, not because the individual goes outside the system? So, mm -hmm. you know, of course, some of those moments where Caleb Love plays hero ball, like those can be within the system and those moments do happen. And that's yeah. when you need a guy like that. So I'm not, yeah. you know. No, no. But when, you, when you've got the band. It's not math. You know, I don't only yeah. solely, right? Yeah, totally. So that I'd like to see our defensive intensity. One one comment I had on the last two games is really, really good defensive intensity. We weren't always in the right place, but I felt like, especially, you know, for the second thirty, you know, the back half of Alabama was really good. <clears throat> um, I actually thought we were pretty good against FAU. I mean, you, you yeah, we gave up seventy three points in regulation. And yeah. that was that was off of you know all those missed shots. Um, some of that was extra possessions for us, but a lot of it was pretty good, pretty good team defense. So I just hope yeah. that they really continue to cement the defensive identity because that's what you can fall back on on those games when you are missing a bunch of easy shots. So you know, um, I, I just want them to take it seriously and have some pride in understanding that it is the last season of the Pac-12 and whether they think they're bigger than the Pac-12, those other Pac-12 teams don't care. They are going to come out and every home game against Arizona is going to be the last chance to beat the big dog. And that doesn't mean everybody's going to play their best, but I think it sets them up to potentially be near their best and some will mm -hmm. play their best. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if Cal came out tonight and went 12 for 25 from three. That might right. not be enough for them to beat us, but they're, they sure can – That'll they scare sure us. They can compete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I, I'm interested to see if we take it seriously and what this team actually, this team needs, needs to decide if the NCAA championship is the most important goal. Cause I'm not, I think they would all say that, um, but I'm not sold. I, I would have believed you after Duke. I mm -hmm. would have believed you after Wisconsin. I'm mm -hmm. not sure I understand where their focus is right now, but again, it could just be that it was a heck of a, eight days in travel it's really tough it was like an ncaa tough. tournament with finals and you know three yeah. neutral sites and so i'll yeah. give them that but championship teams don't make excuses they come out and they get better and so i want to see can you come out and compete and really take it seriously and have a lot of respect for your opponents and not just like last year's team kind of 14 and 6 and we don't you know we don't seem to really care <laughs> Yeah. we don't care that we're down by 15 to Washington state at home. <laughs> yeah. You're like, Oh, that's a bummer. I guess we'll pick it up next game. So Miles Simon be screaming at the TV, you know, like, what are yeah. you like? Have some pride. Right. You know, have some pride. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, and, and I do, I say all that, this is the most critical I've been. I say all that. And I also really believe in this team. I really, mm -hmm. I think the reason why I'm so critical is because this is a real opportunity this year. Like this is a, yeah. they've got a pretty nice special group. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to be heartbroken, but mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm with you there. And um, I was thinking about this, about our chat when I was uh, getting got out of bed this morning and I was just thinking about how the reason why I, I mean, I mean, you know, I said yes to doing this with you and I'm, I'm enjoying this so much. A lot of it's just because I, I believe in this team so much and I, I like these guys and, and I, I, I believe in what they can do. And so whew, hopefully Hopefully they they prove us right and make us proud. Um, but uh, we, we got a chance to see you tonight. Right on. Well, we yeah. we are going to be bearing down one 
game at a time and we'll see everyone next week for the <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even looked at the schedule who are we playing at home next week must be uh it might be the uh, we got Colorado, Utah. Oh, that's right. On it's the, the, the fourth and the, and the sixth. Yeah. See, this is see, this is an instance where I, I actually think the Pac-12 schedule really falls well for us. If if you can if you can, it's a big if, but if you can get yeah. two road wins to start, that's like yeah. Lou Olson always said the home. plus one, and then if you can get maybe the toughest pairing in the conference mm -hmm. right now at home, and yeah. Get them. Of course, it's before the students come back, but it, but if you can get them well. You get off to a four and zero start. That's that's pretty it huge. Be really yeah. big. Yeah. So, we'll, so we're not really there yet. Cal tonight. <laughs> Bear yeah. down, Wildcat fans. Right. 